Hello, good morning, and welcome back, and happy Halloween as well. Um, it's Thursday, so obviously that means we have a new Star Trek Lower Decks episode to talk about. And it's an interesting one, uh, to say the least. So, as always, there is an A and a B plot. The A plot revolves around um, the rest of the Lower Deckers, uh, you know, Mariner, Talyn, Rutherford and Tendi trying to track down this little microscopic uh, nanite thing that keeps eating electricity and joining them on that uh, mission on this um, you know floating hotel in space essentially uh, floating resort rather uh, is Jennifer yes we are finally getting resolution to this um, to, you know, Mariner and Jennifer's uh, relationship because it, ha it just stopped. She, she hasn't really been seen in a lot of episodes since um, it was either season two or season three. I can't remember. It's been that long. Um, but it's it's happy that we get, the, get that resolution. You know, Jennifer acts as if they're still in a relationship. Mariner reveals that she thought that it was implied that they weren't in a relationship because she's practically been ignoring her for the past couple of weeks. Because remember, so far that we know of, the past five seasons have all taken place in 2381. Um, so, yeah, um, don't know how roughly how long, you know, season five could, could be taking place in 2280. Uh, 2382, we don't know yet, but I'm saying that based off of last season finale with how, how dates and stuff uh, match up. Anyway, yeah, so, you know, Jennifer's acting all lovey-dovey um, and, you know, uh, Mariner is like, oh shit, uh, I'm gonna have to, you know, try and break up with her. And then Jennifer reveals that she's gotten transferred to a new ship and Mariner's like, oh, cool, that, that saves me having to do this, you know, this breakup because then I can, you know, just again ignore it because she's in, uh, she's on another vessel. Um, and so as things go, the, the nanite gets worse, starts to get, grow big and big and big, you know, um, and it, I, I don't know the correct terminology for it, uh, but if it goes into this big, cube with many 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 sides um they they had they did say in the episode but i, I i'm bad with remembering certain names of things um but eventually you know they do have that talk they do have that break of thought talk where it turns out that jennifer was just fucking with mariner because mainly because they didn't have that proper breakup resolution that jennifer wanted and so this was jennifer's way to to get that, you know, get it so that the way they, you know, actually mutually break up uh, instead of it just being something that's implied. You know, she wants to hear those exact words. And I like that. I, I definitely enjoyed that. I'm happy that we got to see Jennifer again. Sadly, she she goes at the end of the episode, obviously, because she has a new posting. Um, would have liked to see much more of her as, as a character. Um, you know, instead of it just being setting up for, you know, Mariner and Jennifer's relationship, quickly ending that relationship and then just having Jennifer not appearing until, you know, this episode. Um, and But yeah, like I said, I like that. A lot of the animation was, you know, very good. And it turns out that the, the Nanite is a intrepid class from a the same universe that we went to in episode one. Just a little incy brincy tiny little intrepid class. And again, I love Voyager. Uh, it's ob Obviously it wasn't the Voyager, it was a different ship. But still, it's an intrepid class. And seeing an intrepid class makes me happy because I love Voyager. Voyager is my favorite Star Trek show of all time. I love Voyager, I love Janeway, I love the entire crew. Which is why I'm really looking forward to the documentary um, of To The Journey when whenever that goes on streaming or gets released on digital i'll track down a copy to add into my collection because yeah voyager is just is my star trek show that's that's the one i gravitate the most to um 
So yeah, um, the B plot is basically Ransom uh, comes up to Boimler and takes him on a super secret mission because a admiral has gone AWOL on this resort and is refusing to return to duty. And just prior to um, Boimler going on this away mission, another member of the crew comes back from doing um, one of these secret covert missions with Ransom. Uh, and he's basically, this person has been used as the canary in in the coal mine, you know. Ransom sends him in to do these things um, and he ends up getting hurt because of that. And in this case, we see that he lost both his arms. Um, obviously, they're going to get grown back, but still, he, um, he, he doesn't like that. So that spooks Boimler out. So as they're doing this, that's in his mind. You know, he thinks he's going to get injured, potentially lose his arms or worse. Um, and so he, we get to see a couple of different species, um, alien species. One of the funniest scenes um, that I absolutely love is um, when they're on a ski lodge and Boimler goes over a cliff after, because, you know, he, he can't ski. And the fucking... The, this is the best Boimler scream, in my opinion. The in just screaming from all the way down and the little puff of smoke that we see. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. You know, Jack Wade, fantastic for that scream. Like, that is just the best Boimler scream of, uh, in the entire five seasons of, of the show. I don't think they can top that. Um, eventually, it turns out that the reason why this Admiral went on... Um, uh, AWOL is because all the assignments he's gotten is just milking space whales. Um, so we we know that the whales obviously uh, exist in the Star Trek universe. That, that that's the whole point of the voyage home. Um, so I think that does lead credence to what that probe was. It was the alien whales trying to contact um, the Earth whales. Um, so yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, that, you know, there's specifically an admiral to just milk space whales. Uh, he almost convinced Boimler to go AWOL, but eventually, once Ransom talks, you know, talks Boimler up for the actual reason why he was brought on this mission, uh, that's when Boimler, you know, greases himself up with some, uh, sun lotion and manages to, um, pull a Eric Cartman by squeezing in and out of people's way they they can't keep him you know get keep a hold of him for long otherwise he'll slip out and then uh he frees ransom and eventually the admiral does come back um and there's also a funny scene at the end that had me laughing you know ransom's like oh i wonder where this person you know the person who lost his hands is we're going to do this uh covert mission um and i want to see where he is and he's he's behind him he's like oh shit and he ducks down behind the bar and that's when Raz was like oh there he is he's behind the bar uh, and that was just so funny i i absolutely lost it when when that happened and that's that i like this episode it, it's still setting up the 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 multiverse i suppose of that situation that's going on and um, you know with these spatial risks that's leading to parallel universes that are just just slightly out of sync with our prime timeline, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm very interested to see see how that plays out for the rest of the season. Um, considering that this is unfortunately the last season, so let me know what you thought of episode three uh, in the comments down below. And uh, I will be back later on tonight for my actual Halloween special, which will be my review of Final Destination three. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful Halloween and I shall catch you all at 6pm tonight for another brand new movie review. I'll see you all next time.